Okay, okay. Right. great. Uh, thank you very much. Hello, I'm Karan. I'm a computer scientist at USC, and I'm here to talk about Pegasus workflows. Uh, before we get into Pegasus, it's good to have a primer, a quick rundown on scientific workflows. So essentially, workflows are an abstraction to express uh, an ensemble of complex computational operations. For example, you know, all of you must have done retrieving data from remote storage services, executing applications, and transferring data products to designated storage sites. So that's a workflow. Uh, usually in our community, workflow is represented as a directed acyclic graph of tasks, where the nodes that are represented are tasks or jobs to be executed, and edges indicate dependencies. Those can be control flow dependencies or file dependencies between the jobs. Uh, if if you are not using scientific workflows and have a monolithic monolithic application on an experiment, uh, you know as you get started, you find an inherent DAG structure in your application to convert it into a workflow. Now, at the workflow level, there are a variety of different challenges across uh, domains. Uh, some of them are like you know ability to describe complex workflows in a simple way. Uh, ability for the jobs in your workflows to access distributed uh, heterogeneous data and resources, uh, deal with resources and software that change over time. For example, all of you know clusters come and go, uh, interfaces of submitting jobs to the clusters change. Uh, lastly, and an often overlooked part is ease of use. How do you uh, debug and monitor large workflows? So with the Pegasus, our focus has been largely along these lines uh, uh, since the inception. So there's a clear separation between workflow description and workflow execution. So once you compose a workflow in Pegasus, you can take the same description and run it in different execution environments. For example, you can run it on your local cluster, open size grid, or uh, for example, a cloud environment. In Pegasus, there's a concept of planning, which takes this high-level description and generates an executable workflow out of it. Uh, we, there is task execution, which Pegasus does monitoring, fault tolerance. We provide a web dashboard and debugging tools to the users. And additionally, we do provide additional assurances that the scientific workflow does not get accidentally or maliciously tampered during its execution. So in a distributed system, there are a lot of data transfers that are happening, and Pegasus will automatically do check serves everywhere in the pipeline. Uh, last but not least, I would like to uh, point out that Pegasus is an NSF-funded project since 2001 with close collaboration with the, with the HD Condo team. So it's a collaboration with the USC and the Condo team uh, at ISP. Uh, at uh, Madison. So uh, some key concepts uh, about Pegasus. So Pegasus largely consists of three parts which get deployed on the AP. So you have the Pegasus planner, which is this layer that converts the workflow that you describe to a DAGBIT workflow. The once the workflows are compiled to a DAGBIT workflow, we use HTCon.DAGBIT to submit the workflow and release the tasks in order for us. And then at the uh, bottom layer, we have the SCEDD and the broker. Dagman releases job to the HD Condor SCEDD. And from there, we submit jobs to a local Condor pool or uh, different clusters. Uh, workflows are DAGs. What does that mean? That there are no while loops or conditional branches supported out of the box. Jobs are standalone executables. So just an executable that needs to be invoked. So the contract which uh, Pegasus imposes on a job is not that much. Uh, the planning process occurs ahead of execution and you should think of Pegasus as a workflow compiler. Uh, more about it on this slide. So when we talk about like these portable descriptions, so on the left, I have a high level portable description of let's say like a competition I want to do. So this is a description along the same lines 
you would share with your colleagues on a whiteboard where you will describe that these are the series of tasks I need to execute. And this is the order in which those tasks are executed for each task. These are the data sets I need. But you won't really talk about where those data sets are fetched from or how those jobs get distributed. So from a scientist's point of view, when they think of what their computation or pipeline they want to run in, they tend to think along these lines. So the portability comes from the fact that when you describe a job in Pegasus or any files, they are all referred to by logical identifiers. So there are no physical file paths specified in the input workflow description. So if you think about it, you have a workflow description that captures the DAG structure. It uh, has logical identifiers. So it inherently is portable. And then what Pegasus does is, depending upon what environment you're trying to run your workflows on, it will look up certain catalogs to figure out where the, your data sets that your workflow requires resides, and then add a data staging node. There can be one or many that get added uh, that are responsible for shipping in the data for the jobs of your workflow. The contract which Pegasus gives is like whatever data sets you declare in your description, Pegasus will make them available in the directory where the job gets launched. Whether it's on open size grid, local condo pool, slow cluster, it's Pegasus job to handle the data management for the workflow. As your jobs execute, uh, you know, output products get generated. So Pegasus has these data stage out jobs, which will stage out data to a location or a server of your choosing. And there are registration jobs, which can register your outputs back into the data catalog. Another cool feature, which uh, I'll just talk about in this slide is, as the workflows run, since Pegasus acts at the graph level of the workflow, it can figure out what are the safe points in the workflow to delete data sets. So Pegasus automatically adds data cleanup jobs to your executable workflow, which are responsible for data sets uh, that are no longer required. And this is extremely useful when you're running large workflows of hundreds of thousands of tasks and generating terabytes of data. And it's enabled by default. Another aspect which uh, you know this compilation approach allows us to do is based on what environment you're trying to run your jobs on, you can cluster short running tasks together to better fit what your execution resource supports. So again, like you know, you describe your workflow the way you think the workflow should be described, and then at runtime you can do all these performance tweaks for your executable workflows. Uh, Pegasus provides tools to generate this input abstract workflow. Uh, the most, uh, so we provide APIs in Python, Java, R. The most popular one is a Python API, which is a full-fledged uh, workflow API that allows you to compose workflows, submit them, monitor them, and do all the tracking of the workflows through the API itself. Uh, the API ends up generating the abstract workflows in a simple YAML format, which is self-explanatory self and pretty easy to read. So, you know, what does a Pegasus uh, deployment look like? So I forgot to update the slide. So like there is a workflow submit node or a AP node where you install Pegasus and Condor. So that's the place where you interact with Pegasus and you submit your, your launch your workflows from. Uh, as a user, you can get Pegasus to have your workflow run on one or multiple compute sites. The compute sites can bind to a local cluster, open size grid, or a, a cloud resource uh, where Condor workers are uh, provisioned uh, in AWS or Google Cloud. Your data sets, they do not need to be available on the workflow submit node. They can be on input data sites, which can be spread uh, all over. There's a data staging site, which Pegasus uses 
to coordinate the data movement for the workflow. So for example, if you end up running your workflows in the Amazon cloud, you will, uh, Pegasus will use Amazon S3 as a bucket to do this data staging coordination. And finally, the output site is where the output data products um, are placed. So these are logical entities, depending upon your environment, you could co-locate them. So, you know, you can always have your input data sets on the workflow submit host. You could have your compute site and your output data sites uh, co-located. So it's just that like at the heart, it's a flexi very flexible data model that allows users to run their workflows into in a wide variety of environments. Uh, Pegasus does also come up come with a web dashboard. So it's a Flask-based dashboard that allows users to uh, drill down their workflows. So there is a home page which uh, gives a listing of all the uh, workflows a user has run. It's color coded. Uh, green indicates success. Red indicates failure, and uh, blue indicates running. And by drill down, what I mean is, so you can click on a workflow you'll get workflow level stats. You'll be able to see all the jobs that are making up a workflow. If there are sub workflows in a workflow, you will see those. And you will also see successful and uh, failed jobs. You can click through failed jobs to get the reason on why your workflow failed. So this dashboard is useful for real-time monitoring, reporting, debugging, and it also has a RESTful API available if uh, users want to. Uh, develop against it. At the same time, we do also have a suite of powerful command line tools such as Pegasus Status, which gives you the status of your workflow. So that's a wrapper around Condor Queue. Pegasus Analyzer that allows you to debug your workflow. So if your workflow fails, uh, you just run Pegasus Analyzer. It will tell you what job in your workflow failed and why did it fail. Pegasus Statistics, it's a tool that generates useful statistics about your workflow run, how many tasks were executed, how long they ran for, and so forth. And you know, both the dashboard and the command line tools, they are getting their information from the same data source. So there's no disconnect between the two. I'll briefly mention that Pegasus also has good uh, built-in support for hierarchical workflows where a node in the workflow can be another workflow itself. So there have been a couple of talks this week about uh, users using the subdac feature. Uh, so this is heavily used by uh, a lot of our large-scale users and uh, Pegasus does a really good job in the data management between the sub-workflows also. Uh, Pegasus has support for automatic uh, integrity checking. I briefly touched upon it, but essentially it boils down to that it generates checksums for the files which are generated and compares them uh, at the destination point to make sure there is uh, no corruption. Uh, errors get triggered uh, if uh, this happens. Uh, some new developments over the past year. Uh, Pegasus is also part of the Access support strategy. So if uh, people don't know, Access is the successor to Exceed. So it's a collection of large NSF-funded uh, supercomputing resources all over the US. And the vision there is that Pegasus is uh, to be used as a tier one tool for users to come into the Access website and see what they can do to uh, run workflows on access resources. Uh, so along with open.debug, uh, we have a central instance that is available to all the access users and they can easily run HTC workflows across access sites. Uh, something, some more details about it. So like, uh, so the open.debug portal, uh, instance allows you to log in with your exceed credentials. Uh, so it gives you access to a Jupyter Notebook environment where you can compose your workflows and then submit your workflows onto the access resources. In terms of getting the capacity from access resources, you're leveraging a tool, uh, a new tool 
out of HT Condor called HT Condor Addix uh, that allows users to launch pilot jobs to create virtual Condor pools. I'd like to thank uh, Todd Biller on all his help uh, to us to bringing, uh, getting this deployed and making it available to the users. So at the moment, we are uh, supporting uh, Stampede 2, PSC Bridges, FTSC Expats, and Purdue Anvil uh, access resources. So, you know, I tried to give a flavor of what Pegasus does, and I left this towards the end in terms of like, you know, the collaborations that are using Pegasus. So we have a mix of uh, user base. We have some large scale collaborations such as LIGO that uses uh, Pegasus for their PyCBC workflows, which is one of their main search pipelines. Um, so that's mainly run on OSG. Uh, the Southern California Earthquake Center uses Pegasus to generate these um, large scale hazard maps. And they tend to run mainly on DOE resources. So right now they're running on uh, uh, Summit, mainly their production runs. So we've been supporting them since 2005. And you know, as TerraGrid evolved into Exceed into Access, you know, we provide the translational layer for SCEC to be able to keep up with the changing resources. Uh, so we have Xenon AT also, uh, that's the dark matter search uh, that's run uh, on their local clusters and open sites grid. Uh, Event Horizon Telescope also runs some pipelines to Pegasus, mainly on open sites grid. Uh, so this, the, this number is dated since we bite this last year, but in general, you know, at the last year, uh, these pipelines were pretty high up in the astronomy projects uh, on OSG, and they end up using uh, Cyverse tools. Uh, Pegasus has also been used for real-time data acquisition processing. Uh, so at USC, there were a couple of two, uh, couple of electron microscopes deployed. And we worked with their uh, central computing facility at uh, USC to develop a system that automatically uh, does the, what's the data acquisition happens from the microscopes, does the processing and launches all the processing workflows on the local uh, cluster at USC. Uh, this workflow has a mix of GPU and CPU jobs. And uh, what the cool thing there is like the workflows just keep on getting automatically uh, deployed. Something which, uh, you know, is a slightly alien to this uh, community. So that's why I put this slide up. Uh, Pegasus is also used in a big uh, NIA which uh, funded uh, project. Uh, so it's a, uh, it's a GWX uh, data repository. And there, you know, there are psychiatrists all over the country and the world who submit uh, their phenotypic data sets for quality control curation. So their Pegasus powers a auto QC system. It's a web-based system. So the workflows are hidden from the users, but the users upload their data sets and then a variety of uh, uh, checks are, uh, are run as part of the workflows and then all the feedback is given, but uh, the UI sort of hides it all. Uh, earlier in the week, uh, two days back, you know, I did give a Pegasus tutorial uh, in there, and I just wanted to reiterate that if there are any one of you here who would like to try out Pegasus, you know, we still have the tutorial, it's still alive. Uh, you can claim a uh, trading account and do the trading exercise. The tutorial which we did is the same, uh, but the hosted as the self-guided tutorial available on the Pegasus website. So if you want to try out Pegasus on your own laptop, you can download the tutorial container and do the exercises yourself. Uh, and at last, like uh, some useful pointers about Pegasus, uh, like the main website, our support channels, uh, a lot of our users are now on the Pegasus user Slack where they get in touch with the development team directly about their issues. We do have mailing lists also. So there's a support mailing list if you want to email us directly. So that would be in the favor of like what Condor admin uh, mailing list is like. 
and uh, we do have a YouTube channel where we uh, upload our talks uh, occasionally, I would say. And uh, that brings me to the end of my talk. I hope I was on time and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>